We all pay it, but do you know how taxes work? Do you know how much tax you pay in Canada? His total income tax and payroll tax ends up at $24,801.50. This is the video I wish I saw before I got my first paycheck. We'll break this video down into the following segments. Section one, going over specific types of income and how they would vary. Section two, we'll go over the marginal tax system and how it works both at the federal and provincial level. We'll go over section three, which is the common ways Canadians can reduce their tax bill by understanding deductions and tax credits. In section four, we'll figure out how you could possibly end up with a tax owing or a tax refund. And in section five, we'll go over common payroll taxes or payroll withholding taxes. And finally, we'll be working through a single case study all the way until the end of this video so that you can follow along and get a feel for how this stuff works based on a single individual with simple tax calculations. Hey y'all, I'm Hervin Pessa. If we haven't met before, welcome. I'm a financial planner, but just like you, I'm on a journey to building wealth and financial independence. My mission is simple. It's to help you build your wealth so that you can live a life full of meaning and one that's full of joy. I share weekly money lessons that we all wish we learned in school. I wanna elevate your money game. So if you're ready to take control of your finances and wanna join me in this journey, consider subscribing and be sure to hit that bell so you never miss an episode. Bing, 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 bing. Okay, disclaimer time. I'm not a CPA and this is not tax or legal advice. This is simply for information and entertainment purposes. So please show me how entertained you are by smashing that like button, yo. Smash it. Come on, just do it. Show me some love, come on. First section, we'll talk about the different types of income. The first thing you need to understand is not all income is treated the same way. The tax code is a complex maze of sections and subsections. However, humans designed it. So what you need to understand is there's specific rules created as ways to incentivize or disincentivize us from doing certain things. That's why some types of income are taxed less while some are taxed more heavily. It's to help guide your behavior. Let's go through the key types of income an individual would pay in Canada. Please note that this would change if you were earning this through a corporation, a trust, or a charity. I group them in a way that helps break this down easier. I honestly can't tell you if this is actually how it's grouped in the codes, but this is how I thought it would be best to teach it. So let's start with the most common type of income, which is employment income. This is also known as your T4 income because that's the tax form your employer issues you. This is 100% taxable. Then there's net business income. For those of you who are self-employed or have side hustles, this is net because you can deduct expenses from your total revenue. So any expenses you paid in order to operate your business is deductible. This could include offering your services on the side, doing consulting work, independent commission sales, flipping goods, so buying and selling. And I will actually include rent on this, okay? Yes, rent can be passive if you own properties indirectly through funds or just as a investor into a partnership. But for most people that are landlords and own the properties directly, this works a little bit more actively you have expenses and deductions, and you have some work to do, okay? So you are in the business of being a landlord. If you were offering those services on the side as a sole proprietor, it would be reported under the T2125 schedule, while net rental income is calculated through the T776 form. Let's move on to capital gains. This is when you sell an asset that has gone up in value over time you will only include 50% of your gains in your total income. Interest income, which is treated as ordinary income, just like your employment income, it'll be 100% taxable. There's also dividends, which is when a company you have ownership in pays you some of the profit. There's preferred credits that the Canadian government has established simply by investing in companies that are Canadian owned. 
capital gains, rent, when you don't directly own the property, dividends and interest are referred to as investment income. Now let's meet Joaquin so you understand how varying types of income is treated differently. Joaquin is a graphic designer in Calgary and he'll be our case study for the rest of this video. He'll earn $100,000 in 2021 and he would have an estimated tax bill of $23,903. Let's look at four ways a $10,000 additional income could be taxed. The first is if he earned an extra 10 grand from overtime. He would pay 36% or $3,600 and he would keep $6,400. The second method is potentially earning $10,000 in eligible dividends. He would pay 17.75% on this or $1,775 and ends up keeping $8,825. Our third method of earning that 10 grand is from selling assets, such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and ETFs, or real estate that's gone up in value. He'll only pay tax on half of that growth, or $1,800, meaning he would keep 8,200 bucks. If that same asset sale or dividend payout happened inside the right account, such as the TFSA or the RSP, it would be tax free. He would keep the full $10,000 in his investment account. Wow, magic. Well, not really. Check out this playlist here for the RSP and TFSA. This shows you that the tax system really favors investing in appreciating assets and there's an incentive for you to be an investor and invest long term. You should be an investor. Invest and start a business. Invest and start a business. Starting a business also gives you additional tax benefits and we'll cover that in another video. Now, how did we estimate that he would pay $23,903 in taxes? For that part to make sense, we need to go over and understand marginal tax rates. Canada operates under a marginal tax system. The more income you make, the higher taxes you pay. When you earn an income, you will pay taxes in two levels, provincial and federal. The tax you pay falls under different tax brackets, so you understand the difference. Until 2014, Alberta had a fixed tax system or a flat tax system where it didn't matter how much income you made, everybody paid 10%. Now, most provinces have also moved to a marginal tax system. These are the tax brackets in 2021. Income from zero to $13,808 is virtually tax-free. That's because you would have a personal credit that would offset this income. Someone who earns less than this amount will not pay any taxes unless you're living in a province like Manitoba or Nova Scotia where the provincial tax credits are not the same. And we'll dive into credits later in this video. The second bracket then would be income from $13,809 all the way up to $49,020. This is taxed at 15%. Income from $49,021 all the way up to $98,040 is taxed at 20.5%. Income from $98,041 all the way up to $151,978 is taxed at 26%. Income from $151,979 to $216,510 is taxed at 29.32%, while any income over $216,511 and beyond is taxed at 33%. This is the income level I hope you get to one day, or maybe you're already there. If that's the case, you need a CPA or you need a financial planner. You might need my help. Just because your income falls under the highest marginal tax rate does not mean that's the tax rate you'll be paying all the way through your income. Let's go back to Joaquin. He earns $100,000. He does not pay 26% for everything he makes. If that's you, you would only pay 26% on the amount that exceeds 98,040 bucks. Joaquin's income between zero and $13,808 is tax-free. 
income over that at $13,809 all the way up to $49,020 will be taxed at 15%. He will owe $5,281.80 on it. Income between $49,021 all the way up to $98,040 will be taxed at 20.5%. So he will owe $10,049 on this bracket. Income going over $98,041 all the way to $100,000 will be taxed at 26%. So he will owe $509.60 in this bracket. If you add all that up, he would have a federal tax owing of $15,840. The provincial tax rates work the same way, it just has different brackets. Now let's review the provincial level. Again, Joaquin's in Alberta, so we'll use those rates. However, if you want to understand how this works in your province, I'll be turning this video into a blog article, so check out the links in the description and you'll likely find a calculator there where you can estimate your own provincial tax rates. In Alberta, the first $19,369 is tax-free because of the provincial personal exemption. The rest of his income then will be taxed at 10%, ending up at $8,063. So if you add up the federal and provincial tax rates for Joaquin, he would have a tax owing of $23,903 before additional credits. Because he's earned hundred grand, he would hit the 26% marginal tax rate federally and 10% provincially. This means any additional income, his next dollar of earnings will be taxed at 36%. That's how we came up with the 36% $100 tax on overtime earlier. But note that across the board, his total tax was only $23,903, making his average tax rate 23.9%. He did not pay 36% all across the board. Average tax rate and marginal tax rates mean different things. The marginal tax rates going up means that the more you earn, the more taxes you pay. Also, more incentive for you to hire a professional to navigate through all this mess for you, and I could probably make you an introduction. But let me get on a soapbox here. It's always, always, always better for you to have an opportunity to earn more, even with higher taxes. I often hear people say, oh, I turned down a promotion because it was just gonna go to taxes when I get a pay raise anyway. Or I didn't take the extra shifts because the overtime was just gonna go to taxes. Nah, bro, you turned the promotion down because you were too scared to level up. And it's okay to refuse extra shifts, to rest and spend time with your fam, but that's not a tax decision. Get real. If you really believe that, then I hope this video educates you a little bit because that was not a tax decision. All right, let's get to the fun part. How can you legally reduce your tax bills? You could do so by using tax deductions and tax credits. As mentioned before, the tax code has a way of incentivizing or rewarding our behavior. We can get tax breaks in forms of deductions and tax credits depending on our personal situation. Tax deductions reduce your gross income to get to your total taxable income. On the side note, your gross income is your total income from all sources before you make deductions. If you're applying for a loan or a mortgage, this is what they would ask for. Some bankers call this your line 150 income. That's what that is. So now how do deductions work with this? You take your gross income and you deduct all eligible deductions from that to get to your taxable income. The most common deductions available for Canadians are RSPs, pension adjustments, workplace pension contributions, childcare deduction, support payments to a divorce partner, carrying charges or interest charges for investments. Let's go back to Joaquin. He earned $100,000 and let's say he makes a $10,000 contribution to his RRSP. This would reduce his taxable income by 10 grand. So as far as the CRA is concerned, he would have a taxable income of $90,000. This taxable income then is what you would use to calculate his marginal tax rates. This time, we'll forget about the tax-free layer because we'll go back and adjust that when we learn about credits. So let's address the federal taxes. In this case, he will pay 
$15,753.70 in federal taxes before credits. At the provincial level, he would owe $9,000. This is then where you will apply tax credits. Tax credits reduce your tax payable, whereas tax deductions reduce your taxable income. There are two types of tax credits. There's the refundable tax credit and the non-refundable tax credit. They work the same way, except refundable tax credits give you a refund, while non-refundable tax credits can only bring your tax owing to zero. Credits can either be static or income tested, which means credits can go down as your income goes up. Hashtag tax rich. Tax deductions reduce your taxable income and are dependent on your marginal tax rates. Credits on the other hand are typically based on the lowest marginal tax rate. In 2021, the basic federal personal amount is $13,808. This is then multiplied by 15%, the lowest marginal tax rate federally, giving you a tax credit of $2,071.20. This will bring Joaquin's federal tax to $13,682.70. An important note about the basic personal amount, it gets smaller the moment your income exceeds $151,978. Hashtag tax rich. Let's do the same thing then for the provincial tax credits. The basic personal amount for Alberta is $19,369 and this is multiplied by 10%, which is Alberta's lowest marginal tax rate. Joaquin would get a credit of $1,936.90, bringing down his provincial tax payable to $7,063.10. You would repeat this type of calculation to all applicable tax credits to come up with your final tax payable. Here's a summary of what we just did. You can look at this image on the screen, pause this video right here. The most common credits are donations to charities, medical expenses, and student loan interest. To find the complete list of deductions and credits, check out the link in the description below. So that's generally how taxes are calculated. How can somebody end up with a tax refund or a tax owing then? First of all, the tax filing for individuals is April 30th. However, the CRA does not like waiting before they get paid. So what do they do? They usually take it out of every paycheck and you see that with your pay stub. It shows your gross income and then you have a withholding amount. This withholding amount is the tax you have prepaid to the CRA. This also includes withholding for CPP and EI. When you file your taxes at the end of the year, the CRA will compare the withholding amounts versus the tax calculation that you should pay. If your employer withheld more than the total tax payable, you would have a tax refund. If they did not withhold enough from you, you would have a tax owing. Just to be clear, a refund works like an overpayment. Think of it like when you go to the grocery store and it only cost $80, but you gave them a $100 bill. They give you $20 back. That's how the refund works in the tax system. You're just getting your change. It's as if you lent them money for a year without earning any interest on that money. It's as if you gave the government a tax-free loan. Imagine if your refund was invested all the way through the year. Now let's go back to Joaquin. If his employer knew that he was going to earn exactly $100,000, they would have remitted pretty close to $23,903 in taxes because they didn't know he was planning to make his RSP contribution. So when he files for his taxes next April, based on our estimates, he would only need to pay $20,746 after the RSP contribution. This means he overpaid. This would then lead to a $3,157 refund. Please be clear that a refund is not a financial goal. Saving for your retirement is. Using the RRSP to force a refund is not a substantial goal. 
and the RRSP is not right for everybody. So make sure you check out this video going over the RRSP versus TFSA. Now a common reason why there would be a large refund or a large owing is if your employer has outdated information about you. Every year, whether there's significant change in your family life or not, you should fill up a new TD-1 form. This will help your employer estimate the withholding taxes they need to take out of your paycheck. This is a common issue with people with multiple jobs. Your employer automatically assumes your only source of income is what they pay you. So they don't know about your other source of income and they don't withhold enough taxes and you end up with a tax bill at year end. Additional payroll taxes. I've already mentioned CPP and EI contributions before. Let's just go and dive into deeper detail. The employee contribution for EI is 1.58% for every dollar earned until you reach the yearly maximum insurable earning limit. Withholdings will stop once you've reached the insurable earnings limit, which is $56,300 in 2021. You would have a maximum premium of $889.54. This is important as a distinction because people feel like EI fails them. But the truth is you only paid premiums and insured your income up to 56,300 bucks. In this case, Joaquin will still only pay $889.54 even if he's earned 100 Gs. The next payroll deduction is CPP. Just like EI, you will only pay premiums or make contributions based on a certain level of income. This is known as the yearly maximum pensionable earnings limit. In 2021, it's up to $61,600. And the first $3,500 of income is also exempt from CPP contributions. You make a 5.45% CPP contribution for income that falls within this bracket. For Joaquin, he would pay 5.45% on $58,100. So this is $61,600 minus the $3,500 exemption. This ends up at a total contribution of $3,166.45. If you were self-employed, you get the pleasure of doubling your CPP contributions at $6,332.90 for 2021. The good news is once you've reached the yearly maximum pensionable earnings, you no longer have to make a contribution. This is the same as EI. So if you earn more than those thresholds, you'll notice that towards the end of the year, your paycheck is actually getting bigger because you no longer need to make those deductions. So let's sum it all up. Let's add up all the taxes and withholdings Joaquin would have paid, assuming he made that $10,000 RSP contribution. His federal tax payable starts at $15,753.70, but this is reduced by $2,071.20 because of the federal basic personal amount. This means he owes $13,682.50 for the federal tax. His provincial tax payable starts at $9,000. But again, this is reduced by $1,936.90 because of the Alberta personal amount. This means he would have a provincial owing of $7,063.10. Let's add up the EI of $889.54 for the premium. And finally, $3,166.45 for CPP. His total income tax and payroll tax ends up at $24,801.59. Taking that off the $100,000 gross income, his net income for 2021 will land at $75,198.41. All right, we've walked through quite a bit of information and hopefully the case study has helped you. My intention here is not to help you DIY your taxes. No, that's not what I want you to do. But it's rather to help you think of this as a manual for your relationship with your CPA or your financial advisor. That's because your relationship with your advisor is complex and understanding how taxes work in a high level allows you to have a better and more meaningful conversation with them. This is so that you can ask better questions. 
This also helps you understand the work that they're doing for you. And it's so complex, it needs to be collaborative. If you don't have an advisor, you can always book a consulting call with me or I can make an introduction for you for somebody that's closer to you in your local area. We'll also have a CPA in-house pretty soon here, so I'm pretty excited for that. The next video will be focused on taxes for the self-employed individual and we'll go over tips that can save you money. Until next time, as always, stay aware, take control. I love you all. Peace out. Check this video, check that video, check that video. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Bye.